All friends, this is Nikhil. Now we will discuss our question in K2020 from power systems topic. Now here there is a question about uh, you know formulation of Y bus admittance matrix. So he has given two buses, bus I and bus J. Voltage at bus I is VI, voltage at bus J is VJ, and these both buses are connected by a transmission line of admittance Y. And on both sides of this transmission line, there are two transformers. I should say these two buses are connected through this transformers and this transmission line Y. Transformer transfer, uh, transformer ratios are given like this. One is to T1, Tj is to 1, like this. And you are supposed to find out what is the Y bus matrix. Generally, students who did not went up to the depth of the subject or of this concept will not basically, you know, they will not be so comfortable in solving these questions. Why? Because you must understand the core from where Y bus matrix has started to formulate. Generally, uh, when you talk about Y bus matrix, uh, we will generally, you know, you will come across this technique called as direct inspection method. Many of the students, I should say 95% to 99% of the students will be comfortable with the direct inspection method. But one point you have to keep in mind, there will be a situation like this also, where the direct inspection method will not directly work. Of course, the direct inspection method is just like, high, by adding a method, it's just like a pattern. So if you learn one question of direct inspection method, you can apply it to any other question. But when you know the core, how did you get those Y bus elements? Then you did not depend on any, uh, you know, bus at, uh, direct inspection method. But rather you can directly jump and do. Of course, bus, uh, of course, the direct inspection method will save time. But when you look at this question, we will just first see whether can we do anything using direct inspection method or not. So, on the first look, you may not understand whether we can do anything with direct inspection method or not. The answer would be simply no. But under these conditions, what we have to do? We have to go back to the core concept of how to bring out this Y bus equations. So, basically the Y bus equations comes from this equation that from, uh, you know, at, uh, parallel AC networks, parallel networks that current is equal to voltage or I can say current is equal to admittance into voltage. So, if you are having a current matrix, then that will be equal to multiplication of this network admittance matrix and voltage matrix. Now, what are the currents and what are the voltages of this network and what are the admittance of this network? So, admittance of this network is only one admittance, Y, which is existing between these two, you know, buses, I and J. Now, if you look at this particular uh, options also, options are given, you can only find one term that is y, y, y common in all the elements. So, everything is a game of y combined with t and i. Understood? So, y is the only primary admittance element present in this entire network. Okay? Now, when you talk about voltages, what are the different voltages you are having? j, i, v, i and v, j. Now, what are the currents? There is no information about the currents. So, need not specifically give you information, but you must understand this fact that whenever you will start formulating a Y bus matrix for any network, first what we will be doing is basically we will assume existence of a current source at every bus. So assume that there is a current source, ideal current source at every bus. This current source is injecting some current of let us say I I into this bus I and this current source also injects some current let us say that is I j and this bus j. Now, using nodal equations, okay, using, you know, nodal analysis, we will write down equations at these both nodes. In power system, node is nothing but a bus, where currents basically change or where currents basically divide. So, bus i, bus j. So, node i, node j. So, I will write at node a. So, I will write the nodal equation at node I and the node I, I will write one nodal equation. Uh, what is the nodal equation? This is the nodal equation. I is equal to VY. So, what is the current entering at the node now? So, current entering, entering at the node I is II. That would be equal to what? Voltage into admittance. Now, again, is which voltages this current is circulating from here? If you look here, this current II is circulating from here to here, from bus I to bus J. 
So it is circulating across the potential difference of V i minus V j. So I will write down V i minus V j is the voltage and it is traveling through what admittance? It is traveling through an admittance of y. But but this is where you will get stuck and where you will not understand. See, sir, you said that it is traveling from bus i to bus j, but between there are transformers. Transformers is change of voltages, change of impedances. How can we justify this statement? How can we justify this? See, you just stand at bus i and from bus i you look. From bus i only you are looking. Of course, when you are looking from this bus i, what you can see, you can see only the secondary side, uh, the primary side of this is transformer, let us say this is T1, this is T2. You can see only the primary side of the transformer T1. So when you look at the primary side of transformer T1, what is this winding showing you? This winding will show you what is the voltage here according to its terms ratio. This winding also shows you this admittance Y which is there on the other side of this, one, this transformer according to the terms ratio, isn't it? Transformer is basically a, a it's an impedance changing device, isn't it? It also transforms voltages, it also transforms impedances. That is the reason why transformers will be used as impedance matching devices. So transformers also transform voltages. So when you talk about the current I, this I I, this current is actually circulating between, it is actually circulating between this voltage V I and between that voltage which V J, which is shown by the transformer T1. Now, what is that voltage T uh, the transformer 1 will show about Vj? So, okay, at this point, what is the voltage? It is Vj. Now, this voltage, what would be of this side? You can use the transformer ratio. If it is 1 turns ratio here, this Tj turns ratio here, then automatically the voltage at this point would be how much? Tj into Vj. This much we know. Okay. Now, what is the voltage on this side? Tj into Vj. Now, if it is Ti here and uh, 1 over here, what voltage of Vj will be shown by the transformer T1 to your current I1? I, I. So this voltage. Now what is this voltage equal to? If it is T1 turns ratio here and 1 over here, then definitely the voltage would be here. How much? The voltage would be Vj into Tj by Ti. Okay? So this is the voltage Vj which I, I sees from this side. So, that voltage actually between which this current I I is circulating is between voltage V I minus voltage V J as shown by the transformer T1 and how much is the transformer T1 showing? V J into T J by T I. So, this is the actual voltage that is actually uh, shown by the transformer. Next, I told that this current also circulating across, the, across an admittance of Y. Now what will be the uh, admittance as seen by this current on this side of the transformer? So generally, I used to tell this, uh, you know, uh, this trick to remember how to change impedances from primary side to secondary or secondary to primary side of a transformer. I used to use this technique of SPD. SPD means what? If you are transforming some resistance impedance from secondary to primary, divide with K square, that is transformation ratio scale, square. So, here also, I am considering this is the primary and this is the secondary. If I want to transform this admittance element from here to here, what should I do? SPD. But you have to divide when it is an ohmic component, that is, if it is a Z, X, or R. But here it is a reciprocal quantity, that means admittance, no. Then it would be M multiplied with M. Understood? So, it would be M multiplied with K square. So what is the transformation ratio for this particular transformer? It is Ti by 1 Ti. Okay. So what would be the Y value as seen from this side? It would be secondary to primary multiplied with K square. So Y into Ti square. So it is circulating between the potential difference of Vi minus Vj into Tj by Ti into admittance is Ti square into Y. Right? Now now we will write out about the current Ij. Now current injected is Ij here. Now what is this Ij circulating between? It is circulating between voltage Vj and the other end voltage is Vi as shown by the transformer T2 on this side. And it is circulating on an admittance of Y as shown by the transformer T2. 
So at this point, at this load, the voltage is Vi. This Vi on this side of the transformer it will become how much? Here it is one transformation ratio and Ti. So here the voltage would be equal to Vi into Ti. Vi into Ti. Now Vi into Ti on this side, when transformed onto this side, will become how much Tj turns ratio is to one. So here would be, it would be equal to Vi into Ti by Tj. Ti by Tj. So if you write the nodal equation here at node j, it is circulating across the board potential difference of Vj minus Vi as shown by the transformer T2, that is Vi into Ti by Tj. And it is trans it is circulating through an admittance of how much? So here also you see secondary to primary. I am considering this is the primary because I am on this side. Divided by divided by k square means this is advertise element multiplied with k square. So what is the k of this particular transformer? So k of this transformer depends upon from where you are taking secondary and primary. So I am on this side. So here also transformation ratio is Tj. So it would be Tj square into y. Tj square into y. Now if I can resolve this entire thing, now I will simplify this entire equation. So what I will get finally? I will get I I is equal to Voltage Vi multiply this with multiply with this Ti square Y into voltage Vi minus here Ti into Tj into Y Vj Ij is equal to what multiply Tj square into Y into Vj minus so what will be Ij? I will write first Vi term first. So if I write Vi term first, then I will get minus Ti into Tj Y into Vi plus Vj is Tj square into Y into Vj. Now I can resolve this equation in terms of matrix. What matrix? Current matrix, Y plus matrix and V matrix. So that would be equal to what? What is the currents? We are having II and IJ as the currents. What is the admittance matrix? You see, these are the admittance elements. Okay, this is the admittance element, admittance element, admittance element, admittance element. And uh, what is some VI, VJ? So, admittance element would be TI square into Y. This is minus TI, TJ into Y. And here it would be again minus TI, TJ into Y. And this would be Tj square into y into Vi Vj. Now, if you look at the options, which option is the right answer? The option B will match the obtained solution. So, option B is the right answer for this question. Understood? Thank you for watching.